Okay, we've done horizontal initial launch angles and we've done vertical initial launch angles. So what we want to do now is just to explain D plane. If we assume that the blue shaft here is representing a swing path which at the moment of impact is pointing directly at the target, in this case the, the camera, and we also take the red cane and we point that put that above it to represent a square club face alignment to that swing path, then we're representing the first two parameters in the horizontal. If I then take the blue swing path and tilt it downwards, I can also now represent the angle of approach. So this the shaft is now representing both the direction of the swing path in terms of to the right or to the left, but also the direction of the angle of uh, approach in that it's either down, level, or up. If I take down the red club face alignment and add dynamic loft, I start to create a gap which models four of the key parameters, these being swing path and angle of approach, alignment of the club face, and dynamic loft. Now also from the side you can see that we've created the, the spin loft. Okay. If you remember from the other side that whether or not we're looking at this in the horizontal or which would be here, or if we're looking at this in the vertical, which would be here, the ball's always going to start closer to the face aim than the swing path. And so in this particular model now, that is still obviously quite clearly the case. This is called deep plane, this modelling, because the plane that's formed between the club face and swing path directions creates a plane line. And when the club face is square to the swing path and it's pointing at the target, we have a vertical deep plane. And this is important for a couple of reasons. Whenever the ball starts, we know it starts closer to the face than the path. But it also always starts within that plane. Never to the right of it, never to the left of it, always within that plane. Similarly, we can also start to identify the axis of spin of the golf ball. When the D plane is vertical, the axis of spin of the golf ball is always at 90 degrees to the D plane. So we now have launch parameters where the ball starts closer to the face than the, than the path. It always starts within the, the D plane. And the axis of spin of the golf ball is always at 90 degrees to that D plane. Okay. Finally, the other key parameter that we can identify here within the model is that the lift, lift function of the, of, the, of the ball's flight always happens in the same direction as the D-plane. So in this instance here, it's purely vertical. The ball's going to spin on a horizontal axis, producing pure backspin down a straight line. This is all assuming quite clearly that the ball struck out of the centre of the club face. Okay. So what becomes interesting is when the club face alignment and swing path direction start to veer apart and the D-plane in this instance starts to tilt. Here you can see it tilting to the right. If we did a model of an inside out swing path with the club face closed to that we can see the D-plane tilting to the left. When that happens, and we'll take this as an instance, let's suggest that this club face is aiming 10 degrees off to the right of the swing path. The D plane becomes extremely tilted and still tilted to the right. Given what we've just said and identified, the ball will start closer to the face than the path, the ball will start within that plane, and the spin axis will be tilted at 90 degrees to the D plane. So you can see the axis of spin here is very much tilted to the right. Also, as we've said, the D plane, the lift of the ball will be in the same direction as the D plane. So the ball the lift is off to the right, up, up, and off to the right in this instance. What becomes interesting is if we then make the same alignment, so still 10 degrees, but we use a representation of a more lofted club, hopefully you can see now that this plane is more vertical, which in turn means that, again, even though the ball is starting closer to the face than the path, and within that plane, in keeping with what we said right at the start, 
the axis of spin is still at 90 degrees to that plane. So the axis of spin is less tilted than it was for the lower lofted club. And it gives us a reasoning behind why bull curves less to the right with more lofted clubs than it does with lower lofted clubs. Similarly, the spin is now, sorry, the lift is now more vertical and less off to the right. So identifying the fact that with higher lofted clubs, we have the ball traveling not as far to the left or, as, or to the right with the same misalignment of face and path. And explanation of that is because of the that much greater, that the plane is more vertical and the axis of spin is therefore less tilted than it has ever been before.